Barnes. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Edited by D. Lang Purvis. This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales. The Pardoner's Tale The Prologue Our host gan to swear as he were wood. Harrow, quoth he, by nails and by blood this was a cursed thief, a false justice. A shameful death as heart can devise Come to these judges and their advocars. Or gate this seely maid is slain, alas! Alas, too dear bought she her beauty. Wherefore I say, that all day man may see That gifts of fortune and of nature Be cause of death to many a creature. Her beauty was her death, I dare well say, Alas, so piteously as she was slain. Of both gifts that I speak of now, Men have full often more harm than prow. But truly, my known master dear, This was a piteous tale for to hear. But natheless pass over, tis no force. I pray to God to save thy gentle course, and eke thy urinals and thy Jordans, thine Hippocras, and eke thy galleons, and every boist full of thy lectury, God bless them, and our Lady St. Mary. So may I there thou art a proper man, and like a prelate by St. Ronian. Said I not well, can I not speak in term? But well I wot thou dost mine heart to earm, that I have almost caught a cardiacal, by corpus domini, but I have triacal, or else a draught of moist and corny ale, or but I hear anon a merry tale. Mine heart is brossed for pity of this maid. Thou, Bellamy, thou pardoner, he said, tell us some mirth of japes right anon. It shall be done, quoth he, by St. Ronion. But first, quoth he, here at this ale-stake I will both drink and bite and on a cake. But right anon the gentles gan to cry, Nay, let him tell us of no ribald dry. Tell us some moral thing that we may leer some wit, and then will we gladly hear. I grant he wis, quoth he, but I must think upon some honest thing while that I drink. The Tale Lordings, quoth he, in church when I preach, I pain me to have an hortain speech, And ring it out as loud as doth a bell, For I know all by rote that I tell. My theme is always one and ever was, Radix malorum est cupiditas. First I pronounce whence that I come, And then my bulls show I all and some, our liege lord seal on my patent, That show I first, my body to warrant, That no man so hardy, priest nor clerk, Me to disturb of Christ's holy work. And after that then tell I forth my tales, Bulls of popes and of cardinals, Of patriarchs and of bishops I shew, And in Latin I speak a word as few, to savour with my predication, And for to stir men to devotion, Then show I forth my long crystal stones, It crammed full of clouts and of bones, Relics they be, as ween they each one. Then have I in Latoon a shoulder-bone, Which that was of a holy Jew's sheep, Good men, say I, take of my word as keep, if that this bone be washed in any well, If cow or calf or sheep or ox swell, That any worm hath eat or worm is stung, Take water of that well and wash his tongue, And it is whole anon, 
and farthermore of pox and of scab and every sore shall every sheep be whole that of this well drinketh a draught take keep of that i tell if that the good man that the beasts oweth will every week ere that the cock him croweth fasting he drinken of this well a draught as thilk holy jew our elders taught his beasts and his store shall multiply and sirs also it healeth jealousy for though a man be fallen in jealous rage let make with this water his potage and never shall he more his wife mistrist though he the sooth of her default wist all had she taken priests two or three here is a mitain eke that we may see he that his hand will put in this mitain he shall have multiplying of his grain when he hath sown be it wheat or oats so that he offer pence or else groats and men and women one thing warn i you if any wicht be in this church now that hath done sin horrible so that he dare not for shame of it his shriven be or any woman be she young or old that hath he made her husband cockold such folk shall have no power nor no grace to offer to my relics in this place and whoso findeth him out of such blame he will come up and offer in god's name and i assoil him by the authority which that by bull he granted was to me by this gourd have I won year by year a hundred marks since I was pardoneer. I stand like a clerk in my pulpit, and when the lewd people down is set, I preach so as ye have heard before, and tell them a hundred japes more. Then pain I me to stretch forth my neck, and east and west upon the people I beck, as doth a dove sitting on a burn. My hands and my tongue go so yearn, that it is joy to see my business. Of avarice and of such cursedness is all my preaching, for to make them free to give their pence, and namely unto me for mine intent is not but for to win, and nothing for correction of sin. I reck never, when that they be buried, though that their souls go a black buried. For certes many a predication cometh oft time of evil intention, some for pleasance of folk and flattery to be advanced by hypocrisy, and some for vain glory, and some for hate, for when I dare not otherwise debate, then will I sting him with my tongue smart in preaching, so that he shall not a start to be defamed falsely, if that he hath trespassed to my brethren or to me. For though I tell not his proper name, men shall well know that it is the same by signs and by other circumstances, Thus quite I folk that do us displeasances. Thus spit I out my venom, Under hue of holiness, To seem holy and true. But shortly mine intent I will devise, I preach of nothing but of covetise. Therefore my theme is set, and ever was, Radix malorum est cupiditas. Thus can I preach against the same vice which that I use, and that is avarice. But though myself be guilty in that sin, yet can I make an other folk to twin from avarice and saw them repent. But that is not my principal intent, I preach nothing but for covetise. Of this matter it ought enough suffice. Then tell I them examples, many a one, Of old stories long time gone, For lewd people love tales old, Such things can they well report and hold. What, trow ye, that whiles I may preach, And win gold and silver, for I teach, That I will live in poverty wilfully? Nay, nay, I thought it never truly. 
for I will preach and beg in sundry lands, I will not do no labour with mine hands, nor make baskets for to live thereby, because I will not beg an idle lie. I will none of the apostles counterfeit. I will have money, wool, and cheese, and wheat, all were it given of the poorest page, or of the poorest widow in a village. All should her children stir for famine. Nay, I will drink the liquor of the vine, and have a jolly wench in every town. But hearken, lordlings, in conclusion, your liking is that I shall tell a tale, now I have drunk a draught of corny ale. By God I hope I shall you tell a thing that shall by reason be to your liking. For though myself be a full vicious man, a moral tale, yet I you tell can, which I am wont to preach, for to win. Now hold your peace, my tale I will begin. In Flanders Wylam was a company of young folks that haunted folly, as riot, hazard, stews, and taverns, whereas with lutes, harps, and gitterns they dance and play at dice both day and night, and eat also, and drink over their might, through which they do the devil's sacrifice within the devil's temple in cursed wise, by superfluity abominable. Their oaths be so great and so damnable that it is grisly for to hear them swear. Our blissful Lord's body they to tear. Them thought the Jews rent him not enough, and each of them at others sin laugh, and right anon in come tombsteries, fetis and small and young fruitisteries, Singers with harps, boards, waferers, which be the very devil's officers, to kindle and blow the fire of lechery that is annexed unto gluttony. The holy writ take I to my witness that luxury is in wine and drunkenness. Lo, how that drunken lot unkindly lay by his daughters too unwittingly, so drunk he was, he knew not what he wrought. Herodes, who so well the stories sought, When he of wine replete was at his feast, Right at his own table gave his hest To slay the Baptist John full guiltless. Seneca saith a good word, doubtless. He saith he can no difference find Betwixt a man that is out of his mind And a man which that is drunkaloo, But that woodness, if fallen in a shrew, Persevereth longer than drunkenness. O gluttony, full of all cursedness, O cause first of our confusion, Original of our damnation, till Christ had bought us with his blood again. Look, how dear, shortly, for to sane, abort was first this cursed villainy, corrupt was all this world for gluttony. Adam, our father, and his wife also, from paradise to labour and to woe, were driven for that vice. It is no dread." For while that Adam fasted, as I read, he was in paradise, and when that he ate of the fruit defended of the tree, anon he was cast out to woe and pain. O oh, gluttony, well ought us on thee plain! O oh, wist a man how many maladies follow of excess and of gluttonies, he would be the more measurable on his diet, sitting at his table." Alas, the short throat, the tender mouth, Maketh that east and west and north and south, In earth, in air, in water men do swink, To get a glutton, dainty meat and drink. Of this matter, O Paul, well canst thou treat, Meat unto womb, and womb eke unto meat, Shall God destroy both, as Paulus saith. Alas, a foul thing is it, by my faith, to say this word, and fouler is the deed, 
when man so drinketh of the white and red, that of his throat he maketh his privy, through thilk cursed superfluity, the apostle saith, weeping full piteously, there walk many, of which you told have I, I say it now weeping with piteous voice, that they be enemies of Christ's cross, of which the end is death, womb is their God. O womb, O belly, stinking is thy cod, Fulfilled of dung and of corruption, As either end of thee foul is the sound, How great labour and cost is thee to find, These cooks how they stamp and strain and grind, And turn substance into accident, To fulfil all thy lycorous talent. Out of the hard bones knock they the marrow, For they cast naught away That may go through the gullet soft and swoot. Of spicery and leaves, of bark and root, Shall be his sauce he maked by delight, To make him have a newer appetite. But, certes, he that haunteth such delices Is dead while that he liveth in those vices. A lecherous thing is wine, and drunkenness is full of striving and of wretchedness. O oh, drunken man, disfigured is thy face, sour is thy breath, foul art thou to embrace, and through thy drunken nose soundeth the sound, as though thou saddest I, some sound, some sound, and yet, God what? Samson drank never wine. Thou fallest as it were a sticked swine. Thy tongue is lost and all thine honest cure. For drunkenness is very sepulture Of man's wit and his discretion. In whom that drink hath domination, He can no counsel keep, it is no dread. Now keep you from the white and from the red, And namely from the white wine of leap, That it is to sell in fish street and in cheap. This wine of Spain creepeth subtly, In other wines growing fast by, Of which there riseth such fumosity, That when a man hath drunken draughts three, He weaneth that he be at home in cheap, He is in Spain, Right at the town of Leap, Not at the Rochelle, not at Bordeaux town, And then will he say, Samson, Samson. But hearken, lordings, one word I you pray, That all the sovereign acts, dare I say, Of victories in the Old Testament, Through very God that is omnipotent, Were done in abstinence and in prayer. Look in the Bible, and there you may it lair. Look, Attila, the great conqueror, died in his sleep, with shame and dishonour, bleeding I at his nose in drunkenness. A captain should I live in soberness, and o'er all this advise you right well what was commanded unto Lemuel. Not Samuel, but Lemuel, say I. Read the Bible, and find it expressly, of wine giving to them that have justice no more of this, for it may well suffice. And, now that I have spoke of gluttony, now will I you defend hazardry. Hazard is very mother of leasings, and of deceit and cursed forswearings. Blasphem of Christ, manslaughter and waste also of chattel and of time. And furthermore, it is reprieve and contrary of honour, for to be held a common hazarder. And ever the higher he is of estate, the more he is holden desolate. If that a prince use hazardry, in all governance and policy, he is as by common opinion he hold the less in reputation. Chilon, that was a wise ambassador, was sent to Corinth for full great honour from Lacedaemon to make alliance, 
and when he came it happened to him by chance that all the greatest that were of that land, he playing at hazard he them found. For which, as soon as that it might be, he stole him home again to his country, and said there, I will not lose my name, nor will I take on me so great defame, you to ally unto no hazardous. Send some other wise ambassadors, for, by my troth, me were lever die, than I should you to hazardous ally. For ye that be so glorious in honours shall not ally you to no hazardous, as by my will, nor as by my treaty. This wise philosopher thus said he, Look eke how to the king Demetrius, the king of Parthes, as the book saith us, sent him a pair of dice of gold in scorn, for he had used hazard there before for which he held his glory and renown at no value or reputation. Lords may find an other manner play, honest enough to drive the day away. Now will I speak of oaths, false and great, a word or two as old books treat. Great swearing is a thing abominable, and false swearing is more reprovable. The high God forbade swearing at all, witness on Matthew, but in special of swearing saith the holy Jeremiah, Thou thou swear sooth thine oaths and not lie, and swear in doom and eke in righteousness, but idle swearing is a cursedness. Behold and see, there in the first table of high God's hest is honourable, how that the second best of him is this, take not my name in idle or amiss. Lo, rather he forbiddeth such swearing, than homicide or many a cursed thing. I say that as by order thus it standeth, this knoweth he that his hests understandeth. How that the second hest of God is that? And furthermore, I will tell thee all plat, That vengeance shall not part from this house, That of his oaths is outrageous. By God's precious heart, and by his nails, And by the blood of Christ that is in hells, Seven is my chance, and thine is sink and tray, by God's arms, if thou falsely play, This dagger shall throughout thine heart go. This fruit comes of the bitched bones too, For swearing, ire, falseness, and homicide. Now for the love of Christ that for us died, Leave your oaths both great and smale, But, sirs, now will I ell you forth my tale. These rioters three, of which I tell, Long erst than prime rang of any bell, Were set them in a tavern for to drink, And as they sat they heard a bell clink Before a corpse was carried to the grave, That one of them gan call to his knave, Go bet, quoth he, and ask readily What corpse is this that Parthus here forth by? And look that thou report his name well. Sir, quoth the boy, it needeth never a deal. It was me told ere ye came here two hours. He was, pardy, an old fellow of yours. And suddenly he was slain to-night, For drunk as he sat on his bench upright, There came a privy thief men cleep death, That in this country all the people slayeth. And with his spear he smote his heart in two, And went his way without words more. He hath a thousand slain this pestilence, And, master, ere you come in his presence, Methinketh that it were full necessary For to beware of such an adversary, Be ready for to meet him evermore. Thus taught me my dame, I say no more. By St. Mary, said the tavernier, the child saith sooth, 
for he hath slain this year, hence o'er a mile within a great village, both men and woman, child and hind and page. I trow his habitation be there. To be advised, great wisdom it were, ere that he did a man a dishonour. Yea, God's arms, quoth this rioter, is it such peril with him for to meet? I shall him seek by style and eke by street. I make a vow by God's dying bones. Hearken, fellows, we three be all ones. Let each of us hold up his hand to other, And each of us become the other's brother. And we will slay this false traitor, death. He shall be slain, he that so many slayeth, By God's dignity ere it be night. Together have these three their troth plight, To live and die each one of them for other, As though he were his own sworn brother. And up they start, all drunken in this rage, And forth they go towards that village Of which the taverner had spoken before, And many a grisly oath have they sworn, And Christ's blessed body they to rent. Death shall be dead, if that we may him hent. When they had gone not fully half a mile, Right as they would have trodden o'er a stile, An old man and a poor with them met. This old man full meekly them gret, And said thus, Now, lords, God ye see. The proudest of these rioters three answered again, What? Churl, with sorry grace, Why art thou all four wrapped save thy face? Why livest thou so long in so great age? This old man gan look on his visage, And said thus, For that I cannot find a man, Though that I walked unto Ind, Neither in city nor in no village go, That would change his youth for mine age. And therefore must I have mine age still, As long time as it is God's will. And death, alas, he will not have my life. Thus walk I like a restless caitiff, And on the ground which is my mother's gate, I knock with my staff early and late, And say to her, Leave, mother, let me in, Lo, how I wane, flesh and blood and skin! Alas, when shall my bones be at rest? Mother, with you I would change my chest, That in my chamber long time hath be, Yea, for an hairy clout to wrap in me. But yet to me she will not do that grace, For which full pale and welked is my face. But, sirs, to you it is no courtesy To speak unto an old man villainy, But he trespass in word or else in deed. In holy writ ye may yourselves read, Against an old man whore upon his head You should arise. Therefore I you read, Ne'er do unto an old man no harm now, No more than you would a man did you in age, If that you may so long abide. And God be with you, whether you go or ride, I must go thither, as I have to go. Nay, old churl, by God thou shalt not so, Said this other hazarder anon, Thou partest not so lightly by St. John, Thou spakest right now of that traitor death, That in this country all our friends slayeth. Have here my troth as thou art his espy, Tell where he is, or thou shalt it abide, By God and by holy sacrament. For soothly thou art one of his ascent, To slay us young folk, thou false thief. Now, sirs, quoth he, if it be you so lief to find death, Turn up this crooked way, For in that grove I left him by my fay Under a tree, and there he will abide nor for your boast he will him nothing hide. See that oak? Right there ye shall him find. God save you that bought again mankind, and ye amend. Thus said this old man, 
and ever each of those rioters ran till they came to the tree, and there they found of florins fine, of gold coined round, well nigh a seven bushels as them thought. No longer as then after death they sought, but each of them so glad was of the sight, for that the florins were so fair and bright, that down they sat them by the precious board. The youngest of them spoke the first word, Brethren, quoth he, take keep what I shall say. My wit is great, though that I board and play, This treasure hath fortune unto us given, In mirth and jollity our life to liven. And lightly as it comes, so will we spend. Hey, God's precious dignity, who wend to-day That we should have so fair a grace? But might this gold he carried from this place Home to my house, and else unto yours, For well I wot that all this gold is ours, Then were we in high felicity, But truly by day it may not be. Men would say that we were thieves strong, And for our own treasure do us hong. This treasure must carried be by night, As wisely and as slyly as it might. Wherefore I read, that cut among us all we draw, And let us see where the cut will fall, And he that hath the cut, with heart blithe shall run unto town, And that full swithe, and bring us bread and wine full privily, And two of us shall keep subtly this treasure well. And if he will not tarry, when it is night, we will this treasure carry by one ascent, whereas us thinketh best. Then one of them the cut brought in his fist, and bade them draw, and look where it would fall. And it fell on the youngest of them all, and forth towards the town he went anon. And all so soon as that he was he gone, the one of them spake thus unto the other, Thou knowest well that thou art my sworn brother, Thy prophet will I tell thee right anon, Thou knowest well that our fellow is gone, And here is gold and that full great plenty, That shall departed he among us three. But natheless, if I could shape it so That it departed were among us two, had I not done a friend's turn to thee? The other answered, I not how that may be, He knows well that the gold is with us tway. How shall we do? What shall we to him say? Shall it be counsel? said the first shrew, And I shall tell to thee in word as few What we shall do, and bring it well about. I grant, quoth the other, out of doubt, That by my truth I will thee not bewray. Now, quoth the first, thou know'st well we be tway, And two of us shall stronger be than one. Look, when that he is set, thou right anon arise, As though thou wouldest with him play, And I shall rive him through the sides tway while that thou strugglest with him as in game, and with thy dagger look thou do the same. And then shall all this gold departed be, my dear friend, betwixt thee and me. Then may we both our lusts all fulfil, and play at dice right at our own will. And thus accorded by these shrews tway, to slay the third, as ye have heard me say. The youngest, which that went to the town, Full oft in heart he rolled up and down, The beauty of these florins, new and bright. O Lord, quoth he, if so were that I might Have all this treasure to myself alone, there is no man that lives under the throne of God That should have so merry as I. And at the last the fiend, our enemy, Put in his thoughts that he should poison by, With which he might slay his fellows twy. 
for why the fiend found him in such living that he had leave to sorrow him to bring. For this was utterly his full intent to slay them both, and never to repent. And forth he went, no longer would he tarry, into the town to an apothecary, and prayed him that he him would sell some poison that he might his rats quell. And eke there was a polecat in his whore, that as he said his epons had his slaw. And fain he would him reek, if that he might, of vermin that destroyed him by night. The apothecary answered, Thou shalt have a thing as wisly God my soul save. In all this world there is no creature that eat or drink hath of this confecture, not but the mountains of a corn of wheat, that he shall not his life anon for leet. Yea, stir if he shall, and that in less while than thou wilt go apace nought but a mile. This poison is so strong and violent. This cursed man hath in his hand he hence this poison in a box, and swift he ran, into the next street unto a man, and borrowed of him large bottles three, and in the two the poison poured he, the third he kept clean for his own drink. For all the night he showed him for to swink In carrying off the gold out of that place. And when this rioter, with sorry grace, Had filled with wine his great bottles three, To his fellows again repaired he. What needeth it thereof to sermon more? For right as they had cast his death before, Right so they have him slain, and that anon. And when that this was done, thus spake the one, Now let us sit and drink, and make us merry, And afterward we will his body bury. And with that word it happened him parcass To take the bottle where the poison was, and drank and gave his fellow drink also, for which anon they sterved both the two. But certes, I suppose, that Avicen wrote never in no canon nor no fen more wondrous signs of empoisoning than had these wretches two ere their ending. Thus ended be these homicides too, and eke the false empoisoner also. O cursed sin, full of all cursedness! O traitorous homicide! O wickedness! O gluttony, luxury, and hazardry! Thou blasphemer of Christ with villainy, And oaths great of usage and of pride! Alas, mankind, how may it be tied That to thy Creator which that thee wrought, and with his precious heart-blood thee bought, that art so false and so unkind, alas! Now, good men, God forgive you your trespass, and wear you from the sin of avarice. Mine holy pardon may you all warice, so that you offer nobles or sterlings, or else silver brooches, spoons or rings, bow your head under this holy bull. Come up, ye wives, and offer of your will, your names I enter in my roll anon, into the bliss of heaven shall ye gone. I you a soil by mine high power, you that will offer as clean and eke as clear as ye were born. Lo, sires, thus I preach, and Jesus, that is your soul's leech, so grant you his pardon to receive, for that is best, I will not deceive. But, sirs, one word forgot I in my tale. I have relics and pardon in my mail, As fair as any man in Ingleland, 
which were me given by the Pope's hand. If any of you will a devotion offer, and have mine absolution, come forth anon, and kneel here adown, and meekly receive my pardown, or else take pardon as ye wend, all new and fresh at every town's end, so that ye offer, always new and new, nobles or pence, which that be good and true. Tis an honour to ever reach that is here, that ye have a sufficient pardon ear to soil you in country as ye ride, for adventures which that may be tied, paraventure there may fall one or two down of his horse, and break his neck in two. Look what a surety it is to you all, that I am in your fellowship if all that my assoil ye both more and lass, when that the soul shall from the body pass. I read that our host shall begin, for he is most enveloped in sin. Come forth, sir host, and offer first anon, and thou shalt kiss the relics every one, yea, for a groat, unbuckle anon thy purse. Nay, nay, quoth he, then have I Christ's curse. Let be, quoth he, it shall not be so thetch. Thou wouldest make me kiss thine old breech, And swear it were a relic of a saint, Though it were with thy fundament depaint. But by the cross which that saint Helen fanned, I would I had thy coilons in my hand, Instead of relics or of sanctuary. Let cut them off, and I will thee help them carry. They shall be shrined in a hog's turd. The pardoner answered not one word. So wroth he was, no word would he say. Now, quoth our host, I will no longer play with thee, nor with none other angry man. But right anon the worthy knight began, when that he saw that all the people laugh. No more of this, for it is right enough. Sir Pardoner, be merry and glad of cheer, And ye, Sir Host, that be to me so dear, I pray you that ye kiss the Pardoner, And Pardoner, I pray thee draw thee near. And as we diddle, let us laugh and play. Anon they kissed, and rode forth their way. End of the Pardoner's Tale